Hey, Sean, I've seen a lot of people on social media saying that they thought the High Evolutionary was a better villain than Kang or that he gave a better performance. I think that a bad villain and a villain that clearly didn't work with the specific tone of a film are two different things. I feel a lot of people are getting those confused. If you have someone that's in a movie that you don't think is very good, it's all kind of in that lump together of this isn't very good. And if you have and they underutilized Kang as well. So there's all these things that kind of makes Kang seem underwhelming. If you're trying to introduce your new big bad and your new big bad is defeated by Ant-Man and literal ants in the film, you've created a scenario where it's just not okay, who cares? Maybe it was a decent performance but this guy this is supposed to be our new big bad and we just defeated him already what's the looming threat here if just one avenger and ants can defeat him and I, I think that's a little oversimplified because they were highly evolved very large ants but the point still remains you introduced kang and defeated him it, like in his main intro he's the conqueror he's a big threat he's so dangerous and he's so easily defeated disappointed and not because of like some character flaw or something like that, but he was just defeated. It makes him feel weak. It doesn't make him seem like a great villain. And even the way they marketed the film, I don't need to win. We both just need to lose. And then Ant-Man wins. You wasted it. You wasted your moment there. And it makes Kang seem like a weak villain. I think some of the criticisms of the, the performance feel like that's a bit of the combination of recency bias, anti-Jonathan Major's sentiment now that there's allegations that haven't kind of disappeared, and then we have a movie come out that's better received. Okay, well, this guy's the better villain. That doesn't mean Jonathan Majors gave a bad performance. That doesn't mean Jonathan Majors was the problem. I don't know if Jonathan Majors is guilty. I, I don't know, but even if he is, it doesn't mean he gave a bad performance. Even if he needs to be removed, it's not because he gave a bad performance. So I think there's a lot of that. I think when you, part of what James Gunn did such a great job of with the High Evolutionary is that he gave us an, a villain you actually hated. I hate him, hate him, hate him. He gave us a villain that you wanted to see destroyed, that you wanted to see our guardians take him out. You wanted to see every one of his workers, anyone that sides with him to die. <laughs> like you don't have a lot of Marvel villains that elicit that kind of vitriol hatred for them. Especially in phase four, they leaned heavily into sympathetic villains. Oh man, it's too bad that this person is behaving that way. Oh no. Scarlet Witch, she's really in pain, so she's acting out. But I don't. I want her to be. I want her to come back to good. I don't want her to to suffer. The flag smashers. Well, they were displaced people, and they're just trying to take care of themselves because of these bad policies, and they've gone down a bad path to do it. Well, and you just kind of go through all of them, like Namor. Well, he's trying to protect his nation, and then you get to the High Evolutionary, and he's just a monster that believes that he's better than everyone else. He's convinced of it. And so he's not sympathetic, but you can see his worldview. And it's a sick, gross one. And you, you like, because you feel he's dangerous, but he also has built-in character flaws, that his obsession is what leads to his downfall, that he won't, he could have been victorious if he just would have turned back and run, but instead he stayed while things were crumbling around him. Because of all of that, I think it makes him more interesting and compelling than the guy in a not-so-great movie that is defeated by ants and doesn't really cost anyone much. And it's not, he's just kind of defeated. Oh, he's supposed to be this big menacing threat that he can do anything. Everyone keeps telling you how dangerous he is. And then when it comes time to defeating him, it's pretty easy. Barely an inconvenience. There's no particular reason why related to they outthought him, they outmaneuvered him or anything like that. He just screwed up. He just, he just, he just lost because ants beat him. I think all of that kind of ties into it, but th that's what happens when you, you have a movie that's well-written by like one guy with a vision, clear what he wants to do, 
And when you have a movie that is written by a committee, reshot, re-edited, all the way up to the last minute, all of a sudden, you're trying to introduce this big menacing threat, and you're like, okay, that happened. He doesn't feel all that dangerous. And you watch this other movie, and you go, High Evolutionary might not pose the biggest threat, but you hated him for such personal reasons because of what he did to Rocket and Rocket's friends. You just hated him and wanted to see him taken down. And because of that, he feels like a much better villain because he, you, you were felt the way you were supposed to feel and you didn't feel the way you were supposed to feel with Kang, which is dread that he's coming and that he's out there. And you just don't feel that at the end of Quant uh, Quantumania. Most of these clips are pulled from my weekly Patreon live stream. Join at any level and you can join the chat and ask all the questions you want. That's for as little as $2 per month. For $5 per month, you can get your name on my end card. For $25 per month, you can have a monthly video chat with me. Link is in the description for more details and keep talking movies and TV too much.